Hello and let's talk about the instances of racism that were reported in the third test between the Indian and Australian cricket teams. So two Indian players, Mohamed Siraj and Jasprit Bumrah, said that racist slurs had been thrown against them, they had been abused by spectators on the stands. These incidents happened on both Saturday and Sunday and play was stopped and those spectators were evicted, a complaint has been filed. But these incidents only throw a light at the larger problem of racism, especially when it comes to sport. There have been a lot of instances in previous tours by India as well and not only in cricket but in all other sports, it's an endemic problem. So we have News Clicks Leslie Xavier to talk more about these issues. He talks about the complicated relationship between structural racism and sport and instances of racism and such discrimination between uh, sports persons inside the sporting fraternity itself. Here's what he has to say. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. So uh, yet another instance of uh, racism. And in this case, of course, the team took a very prompt stand, a united stand. And the authorities were, of course, also moving in to take action by evicting some spectators. But we do see that this is a recurring problem. It has happened in Australia, even in an earlier tour as well, I believe in 2018. And at that point, too, a similar action had taken. So this is an issue that definitely the Australian cricket board really needs to deal with. It's, uh, I mean, I don't think it's it's just confined to Australian cricket board. It's a societal issue. So I guess everybody has to address this. And I'm talking not just about, for Australia, but I'm talking about all the countries across the world because this keeps on happening everywhere. English, English football, Italian leagues, Germany, you, I mean, US. I mean, we know what happens there. So it's it's all over the place. So what has happened now is it was a great contest as far as the test match is concerned. So, but then the test match, its its context, its relevance, everything is I mean overshadowed and rightfully overshadowed also because it's a serious issue racism uh, by by the racist chants and slurs targeted at Siraj and Bumrah. This happened on Saturday. So the match was stopped at that point and. Uh, they went to the the players went to the umpire captains of both the teams they got together they decided to address it and the match was stopped for a brief while and then they restarted police came and removed the spectators who were involved in it uh, but um, it's 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 not australia cricket establishments or uh, australia teams problem as such so when we when we address this and from our side, from, from India, when we were criticizing and condemning these acts, a lot of players and a lot of uh, ex-players and generally Twitter IT and the social media commenters, uh, they tend to target Australians in general, inherent racist country. They go back all the way to the history of them, I mean, Australia being a recent colony to start with. Isn't that racism? So what are we trying to prove with that? That's that's the question now, that we are bigger, bigger racist than they are. Because uh, see, a, a racist slur or a chant or targeted statements happening within that stadium came to light. But what about all those statements that's been hounding Australia ever since that happened on Twitter? So this feeds into that larger problem that the world is facing as such, which is racism in general, uh, be it casual racism, be it explicit racism, be it attacks, physical, uh, I mean, attacks, which, which are meant to harm, which are meant to kill even. So, so it's uh, uh, when, when Black Lives Matter, the movement was happening and when cricket restarted and Michael holding spoke at large and which became a very viral and famous video about about racism he faced and what exactly is the problem he he was very clear that it's a societal issue it's it's educate it's 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 taken centuries to take it to where it is now and centuries of education system systematic uh, uh, racism ingrained into all walks of life, be it education, be it, be it uh, popular media, be it anything. So it takes years of undoing for, for this to for this to clear out. And uh, he was glad at that point that the moment has started, but then six months, eight months down the road, these things still happen. 
and crowd coming into the stadium and chanting it shows how bad the situation is in that specific place so this happens in indian stadiums as well uh, it happens uh, in i mean if you look at the crowd alone uh, they target opposition teams they uh, throw out abusive expletive languages at them probably in hindi so that's why they probably don't catch initially but yeah animosity towards the opposing team always happens from the stadium and when it uh, when it takes racist intonations then yeah it's a serious serious offense altogether so recently like couple of weeks back uh, two english uh, championship sides were penalized and then they decided to take action against because when when players were kneeling down for the for the uh, before the start of the movement in solidarity taking a knee is a sign of solid uh, expressing solidarity to black lives matter movement and generally against racism stands against racism so when they were doing that there were jeers and boos from the from the crowd so the, again action was taken police case was filed against against this thing similar thing has happened i'm i'm very glad that australia cricket australia bcci as well as the authorities there uh, the police of new south wales state because this happened in sydney so they have uh, decided to pursue it investigate it and i personally listened to that video so it's very unclear what exactly was the statement made but whatever it is i mean i'm sure since the police is involved they would use forensics to determine what exactly the, the uh, slurs used were and if it is found to be racist then action would be taken against them but the larger action is uh, what needs to be taken taken within the society and that brings us to another point which i want to mention in this this episode specific so we tend to de- talk about monkey gate issue that happened arbhajan singh and uh, back in 2008 and do simons so uh, it's not the same let's just be very clear about it there to play i mean uh, we indians players were were i mean allegedly racist that way because nothing was proven and then he was he was he got off the hook uh, but what exactly the truth is it was a it was a nasty incident on the playing field and that is much more serious and then some random crowd who were who according to media reports were drunk as well uh shouting they are uh, doing ch- uh, racist chants against against the indians the other other incident is serious so let's not compare those two also the, that comparison has been happening ever since the incident happened and so uh, as far as this particular incident is concerned it's unfortunate that this happens but it keeps on ap- happening across stadiums across the world and it's it's uh, about time that we address uh, how do you re- uh, cancel it off just like what michael holding said at that point it's 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 a societal problem and it will only get cancelled or it will only become less once uh, systematically the change happens to the society across various layers of the society absolutely and i i guess an important point like you said is that when it comes to media responses when it comes to responses by the commentary it knee jerk reactions of uh, what do you call it? our racism or your racism are actually quite problematic and they kind of obscure the issue at stake because often what it does is it gives say some sections of people a kind of moral superiority by pretending that oh they are the racist people and we are you know uh pretty clean and we have no such issues of that sort whereas like you said almost every single country has its own very horrible record of uh, racism as well and which manifests itself in sport as well but in this case i think an interesting question would be regarding uh say whether any kind of action is possible on behalf of authorities it to uh, basically avoid such kind of situations while action after it happens is of course necessary but it does spoil the spirit of the game it does spoil the momentum not only the momentum of the game but the entire atmosphere because that is how the game gets uh, remembered by and uh, whether there is any kind of uh, of course it's a difficult process because you can't really screen yeah. people for race uh, racism so to speak but nonetheless in terms of awareness activities have there been other instances of uh say boards or establishments actually taking action on those things. 
so uh, in europe if at all uh, there are instances of crowd being very hostile and uh, a ban happens they play i mean see now it doesn't matter that way because everybody is playing to almost empty stadiums and only a few uh, numbers are allowed specifically in certain countries etc but when full crowd was there and when uh, i mean specific teams are there who are known to be inherently racist towards black players or uh, players of different ethnicities who play for visiting sites uh they take action uh, they would be given i mean crowd would be banned from the stadium they will have to pay play in front of an empty stadium and uh, also the clubs are penalized for not ensuring that such instances because repeat offenders these tend to be repeat offenders and so while it's difficult to screen uh, fans getting into stadiums for their racism because you can never understand what where they come from what they come from but if a person is a repeat offender he should be by, i mean there are there are clubs who do that there are organizations sport organizations who do that in football specifically i'm talking about where uh, they are not allowed back into the stadium at all or they will be given so many i mean a seasons ban or something like that you can't you can't come in whether that solves the problem at i mean in general it doesn't because it's a, it's again a plugging the hole a whole kind of a this thing but but it doesn't plug holes that is that is very visible and glaring in the society right so and then so in that context uh, we uh, we are also know better if you look at if at uh, look at india as a country as such in, in, in indian venues as such and india's problem is multi i mean manifold that way because ours is not just about skin color or certain i mean ours because we are very ethnic uh, ethnically diverse and at the same time we are also uh, there is a caste and caste system that divides us and there is also a economic class divide as well so india has like three prong pronged problem problem in itself so i can get into some specifics about that uh, uh, but in general when we take a moral stance moral high ground when such inst- instances happens against the indian cricket team when they are playing abroad uh, we we i mean being brown skinned and being at the receiving end at, at specific countries uh, white countries doesn't give you the, i mean doesn't absolve you from looking into yourself and what you as a country do to people in your i mean your citizens that way because we have our different states we have athletes and players coming from north east distinctly different in appearance they get targeted all the time so chinki is the common slur that is used which is i mean derogatory to the core so uh, let's let's not let's not forget forget that aspect as well and let's not forget that when we throw a stone at australia we first should probably start course correcting at home Absolutely, Leslie. In this context, I also wanted to ask you about. Uh, see, we talked about this issue in the context of fans. We talked about how organizations deal with it. But what about within the sporting community itself? We slightly touched upon this earlier when we were talking about Harbhajan Singh and Andrew Simmons. But like you said, this is a, a multi. It's an issue with many dimensions. This is an issue of various sports, and I would presume there are a lot of instances of such. incidents happening within the athletes and the community itself so could you maybe take us through some of those issues in, especially in indian sport and if there's been any steps around that when mentioning monkey gate i reiterated also in a way that uh, it's it's much more serious than this fans jeering incident why because it's within a sports person who you keep at a pedestal who you are expected to behave responsibly doing that so uh, that that has a serious connotation to sport in general and how sports sport stands against discrimination against a lot of uh societal issues sports is considered a leveler and then these things happen when sports persons do it 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 it, it takes on added significance so that's why i kept mentioning that earlier and uh, coming back to the i mean the point it's 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 a matter of i mean when you look at it i'm just confused which sport to start because in, in every sport you find find in in india i'm i'm specifically talking about india in every sport you find discrimination and since we started off talking about cricket and and the sydney incident let's stick to cricket first and uh, uh, if you look at indian cricket team history 
right from the first pop, I mean, unofficial Indian team, which was formed pre-independence era during the British uh, rule. Uh, Palwankar Baru uh, was a Delhi cricketer, and this is pre-independence. And post that, uh, if you consider Eknath Solkar and uh, Vinod Kambli coming from backward uh, communities, otherwise there has not been a Delhi cricketer ever to play for the Indian team. So that shows the skewed uh, demography of the structure in cricket, which which doesn't facilitate the growth of players from, from backward communities as such. And we are talking about India where cricket is a religion. Everybody plays. It's not like backward community kids or kids from certain, certain uh, economic strata or certain religious group or certain state don't aspire to become cricketers. Everybody wants to become a cricketing star. Everybody wants to become such and such. But not everybody gets a chance. And if you look at the history of cricket, it's it's very apparent in India that uh, the upper caste have a, have a distinct advantage, advantage when, when it comes to tra traversing the various levels of cricket from age group to state level to Ranji level to international of cricket. So, uh, by the time the the cream reaches the international stage or the elite level, it's I mean the other people fall fall off because they just the structure is 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 always biased, uh, and that's cricket for you. And then when you look at other sports, uh, if you take football or boxing or wrestling or everywhere there is some form or the other of uh, discrimination. When you take football and boxing, for instance, or some other martial arts as well like judo. Northeast athletes are pretty strong in this. So the elites who come across, like for instance, a Mary Kong uh, or a Sunil Chetri or, or a Renedi Singh, I mean, they reach a certain level and of course they are identifiable. I mean, people know them and still they are not spared. So at the start of lockdown, when uh, Sunil Chetri and Virat Kohli was having a Instagram live session, uh, someone in the comment section asked, who is this Nepali? So... <laughs> Uh, that's 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 the general I mean, crowd we are talking about. But within the sport, uh, these uh, many athletes, northeast from northeast, have come on record talking about how at the early stages or various stages of their career they would they have faced discrimination from simple small things like while traveling in the train, for instance, the guard or the ticket checker would would look at you with suspension or suspicion and they are not outwardly racist but they are rude to you they will check your bag it, it, it use the lati and hit the bag saying what are you carrying what is this are you smuggling things like that these is small subtle questions stereotyping all these things there many of them are faced so and then not to mention they i mean they look distinctly different from the rest of the rest of the athletes coming from indian state so they when they reach camps or at tournaments also they're always discriminated that way because appearance-wise, they look distinctly different. So the famous, I mean, the slur word that they use, we all know, and it's it's commonly used, thrown about abuse from uh, not just in sport, but generally in the in, in cities, wherever they, wherever these, uh, wherever people from Northeast go to make a living, to study, anyway. So that continues even in sport. And hockey, when you take Bilip Turkey, I mean, uh, represent, Dilip Turkey represents uh, a group of, uh, I mean, he's possibly the one of the most identifiable name in hockey of the, of, of, uh, the 90s and 2000s. He was India captain. He is a former MP and uh, multiple Olympian. Uh, he has come on record saying that the initial part of his day. So, uh, Jharkhand and uh, Orissa, Orissa, Turkey is from Orissa. A lot of tribal hockey players have come up from there. And so Tilki was saying that the initial part when they reached the national camp, and of course they belong to a, a place, a community where they are not very strong education-wise. So language articulation and all these things they pick up later once they come into the national team fold and travel and gain experience and all that. So the predominant language in use in camps is either Hindi or Punjabi. And they initially itself, because of the language barrier, they they find themselves as aliens. And then uh, Tirkiya said that uh, there were many instances when fellow players had reminded him that he is an Adivasi. I mean, this is, in, I mean, of course, later he became a star and then these things stopped. He was India captain too. But but that's how that's how 
the system is set and when 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 players come in they face these odds and these i mean if you are not truly a star or if you are not that mentally strong if you are not willing to fight and come through then you you get lost it's as simple as that the same thing happens in wrestling and that too in a larger level because in wrestling if you look at it outwardly everybody looks the same that way right because you are talking about various states in north india you are talking about maharashtra wrestlers coming into the system but then the sport is dominated by uh, the north indian belt and out of which the largest community that dominates sport in wrestling is jhart and of course there is a brahmin group as well and so within the wrestling national elite uh, group there is always a dominance by jhart and they try to undermine uh, wrestlers coming from other states and other communities so if you ask me for a proof for this players experience players uh, face this some players have come out and reveal this but uh, like anything abusive like for instance like i mean comparable to domestic abuse also there is always this i mean it's always open to interpretation or we, the society has been for, set in such a way that it it's always justified by saying that i didn't mean it we didn't mean it i called you in a certain way uh, darren sammy the west indian cricketer had said that his teammate and the teammate is ishan sharma of sunrise hyderabad used to call him kallu later he realized that that's a derogatory word i mean he, he said ethnicity is being questioned uh, but then ishan sharma or many players or justified it by saying that are kallu dosti friendship i mean we were just calling you black out of friendship but but that's not i mean that's not how it should be right the same thing here it's it's uh, i mean discrimination happens subtly sometimes not so subtly but then it's also glossed over by 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 justifying it by saying that it was not meant or it was not it is not like that so this is what is happening in india and when we do this uh, when when the incident happened in sydney and when we do that comparison and when we are critical about australia and how australia has always been racist and all that we we shouldn't forget that in india there is a larger pro- problem the problem is within the system also within sport uh, in australia if 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 racism happened at the stand by a fan in india it happens on a everyday basis many athletes face this so that's that's the systemic problem that we should address we should realize and we should start changing things from home rather than uh, worry and be aggressive about uh, portraying the faults of of a country which is which is so far off and so i mean we we uh, we should be more concerned about what affects us on a day to day basis and that's that's right here in your face that's it absolutely right thank you so much lesy for talking to us that's all the time we have today we'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the country until then keep watching news click Thank <laughs> you.